Tony says I need no introduction. I don't know if that's good or bad. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, Commissioners, uh, Secretary Hepler. Good afternoon. Uh, it's that time of the year where we finished up all of our deer drawings and, and uh, we've gotten some questions about how things work and we had, uh, had some internal discussions and thought maybe it was a good idea for us to maybe run through this uh, deer drying procedure and, and, and remind you guys or, or some of you are going to hear it for the first time um, exactly how we do this and uh, how, it, uh, how we apply preference, uh, what does landowner preference mean, what are the different options for landowners, kind of a deer drawing 101 if you will. Um, it, I've done this several times over the last uh, 10, 12 years. Um, it's always a balance between trying to get into every nook and cranny in detail and not boring you to death. So um, I don't know that I've landed on the exact combination, but I'll, uh, I'll do my best to, to uh, not bore you to death. Maybe. There we go. Um, I want to talk to you today about four kind of major areas. Uh, excuse me, five major areas. Um, we'll go through the landowner owned land license, which is uh, one license that's available. We'll talk a little bit about free landowner antlerless licenses, which is another option for landowners. And, and then finally, from, from a landowner perspective, we'll talk about landowner preference in the general drawing. Um, those three things, uh, you know, as you guys get questions, I know sometimes that can get confusing. Even staff, uh, as they deal with questions coming in from individuals, um, you know, what, what kinds of license, licenses are available to landowners? What do they all mean? Um, are they part of the general drawing? Are they not? How does that process work? Um, we'll talk about those uh, just a little bit. Um, we'll also talk about the preference points and how they impact the drawing. And then we'll actually uh, go through some examples of um, some deer drawing specifically. But uh, the, the process that we use for deer, the general deer drawing is also applicable to antelope and turkey. It's, it's the same process. Um, it's a little bit different than our elk process, but uh, it's, it's standard for those three species. I want to start out with the landowner own land license. Um, this license uh, applies to antelope. East River deer and West River deer seasons. Um, the qualifications for that, uh, you, you know, you need to be a resident landowner um, who does not have a tag valid for a buck. You can't draw in the regular drawing for a license that allows you to shoot a buck and then turn around and, and get an additional license on your own land. Uh, we have a minimum qualification of 160 acres, which is linked to statute. Um, you can own or lease that for agricultural purposes that property. Um, hunting leases do not qualify and that's pretty standard across the board for anything that qualifies you as a landowner is that a pure lease for hunting does not qualify you at, for any of the landowner licenses. And the land must be within the hunting unit. Within the hunting unit as it pertains to a landowner owned license, the hunting unit for East River deer is all of East River. and the the hunting unit for West River deer is all of West River. Antelope, it's a little bit of both. There's some East River units and there's some West River units, but you don't have to, uh, it, it, it's just you have to have land West River in order to get a West River landowner tag. And you can hunt any of the land that, that that's available or that you own or operate. All immediate me family members are eligible for the landowner own land license. So if you've got yourself, your wife, and four kids that are uh, 12 years of age or older, they can all get a license to hunt on your own land. They're unlimited in number. We don't have a quota out there. It's set in statute. It's anybody who qualifies, but only one, only one per person per season. Um, if you own Easter, if you own land in East River and West River, you can get a landowner license for each one of those seasons. Uh, Licenses are valid on operated property wherever the season is open. Um, so it, it, if you cross county boundaries, um, you, it, that, that doesn't pertain to you. You hunt your own land where it exists within that season. There are two options there for the landowner own land tag. It's a single tag and a double tag. Um, the single is an any deer and the second, the double tag is an any deer plus an antlerless deer. And these are half price licenses and, and this is all set in statute. 
the, 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 the department, the commission, does not have a say in the way that these things are, are done. This is, this is in statute. And this is not part of the drawing process. So you fill out an application, you send us your application along with the half price fee, and you are issued a license for you and your immediate family. So that covers the landowner owned land license. The next landowner license is the free landowner antler list deer license. Um, this license is valid in some, some additional seasons, those being uh, archery, muzzleloader, and youth, in addition to the East River and West River seasons. Um, qualifications are, are pretty much the same, resident only, minimum of 160 acres, your own land, hunting leases do not qualify. Um, the, all members of your family can get this license, but the change between the antler lists and the, and the regular own land licenses is that only two licenses can be issued per ranch or farm, per ranch or farm unit. So even though everybody in your family qualifies, you're still only going to get two licenses. Those two licenses could go to one individual. Those two lic or one licenses could go to husband wife, one to husband or father or son, whatever that combination is. But you're only going to get two of them. Uh, licenses are valid on hunting units, which offer a deer license with multiple tags for antlerless deer in the lottery drawing. So this is a change that we've made. Um, Tommy was in the last year, this last year, correct? Um, if a hunting unit has, uh, offers double doe tags in the rifle season during the regular drawing, then you as a landowner are eligible to, to pick up these uh, free antlerless licenses. So it's kind of where we have those archery antlerless restrictions, where we have those muzzleloader antlerless restrictions. Those are, oh, no, I'm sorry, I'm confusing my two. It's where we have the, the multiple tags available in a unit. That's, that's where you can pick up these licenses. There's single tags. There's two of them, as I mentioned earlier. And again, there's no drawing required with these two licenses. Um, again, you fill out an application, send it to us, and we will send you those two licenses. The third option for landowners, and this is where we, we oftentimes run into some, con oh, excuse me, can go, go ahead. Question? Yeah. Confused. Yeah. The, uh, the tags issued to a family, like, like you said, father, son, father, daughter, husband, wife, it's not named? No, it, it, it is named, I'm sorry for that confusion. It is, it goes to an individual within that family, okay. but the, the family unit can have two licenses whoever they choose to have. Sorry about that. And then again in that, those have no cost to it, where the first one there's a cost to it. That first That's one was half they're... price. Those were free. Mm -hmm. uh, the the so analyst tags are free. And again, this one is, this one's set in statute. This is, uh, this is another one that uh, our, our biologists are, aren't gonna bring you a recommendation on because it is set in statute. The, the third landowner, uh, opportunity is the landowner preference in the general drawing and uh, as you can see this is also uh, defined in statute in establishing eligibility the commission may give preference to persons who actually operate or live as owner or tenant on agricultural timber grazing land situated in areas open to such big game hunting this is the landowner preference in the general drawing um, and, and we sometimes get confused between landowner owned land landowner preference this is the one that applies to our general drawing process, and I'm, I'm going to work through that with you guys a little bit. We offer landowner preference in the antelope season, Black Hills deer, East River and West River deer, spring and fall turkey. Um, basically, it's those big game seasons that aren't statewide. Uh, we don't offer a landowner preference in, say, in archery, uh, or a better example would be the muzzleloader season. Um, those muzzleloader licenses are statewide licenses, and we do not offer a landowner preference um, because they are statewide. The qualifications, again, look real similar. Um, residents only, 160 acres, agricultural purposes, hunting leases don't, don't qualify, and land must be within the hunting unit. And again, you go back to that hunting unit, that's, uh, that's a little bit different as it applies to landowner preference in the general drawing. You remember going back to the landowner owned land, the unit is that entire season. It's all of West River or it's all of East River. 
in the East River, let's use an example of an East River deer drawing, land must be within the hunting unit. So if you apply in, if you want to use your landowner preference in Lake County, some, at least some of the land or some, a qualifying piece of land must be in Lake County. You need to own or operate 160 acres of land in Lake County in order to, to qualify. 50% um, of the licenses in each unit available uh, to qualifying, unit, qualifying landowners. Um, we're going to go through some examples of that, but if there's a, 100 licenses in a unit, 50% of those are set aside for landowners. All family members, again, are eligible. Um, there's, there's no uh, a limit. If you've got eight kids and they're all of legal hunting age, they can all apply for this license, apply for a license using landowner preference. Uh, licenses that are invalid for the entire hunting unit. That's, that's one of the major differences between a landowner-owned land and a, and a general license is that, you know, if I, if I get a if I use my landowner preference to again use, use my example of Lake County, um, I can go anywhere I want to in Lake County if I use landowner preference. Landowner owned land, I have to hunt only that land which I own or operate. So, any, yes, sir. Landowner owned land living on the land or living in town? <laughs> No, I mean, <sighs> I, I, I'm, I'm going to have to take the fifth on that. If anybody wants to explain that, I, I brought my applications along. Um, there, are, there are different qualifications for those. Is somebody going to bail me out back here? Thanks. Bill. <laughs> run like rats. <laughs> Yeah, here, Tony's going to bail me out. Hey, so you saw the qualifications up there for landowner preference. Scott showed it to you, what's in, written in statute. It said, may give preference to those who live on and own or actually operate. So it's intended to be geared towards individuals that are true farmers and ranchers. That's the intent here. So if a landowner uh, owns land but doesn't live on it, um, they're, I'm trying to think, and that, the one that says they actually have to live on the land uh, is not in the statute for landowner own land licenses. It does not say in there that they have to live on the land. It just says landowner or operator, and the author of that particular piece of legislation is in the room, and I can defer, for, no, I'm sure you don't, don't necessarily remember all the intricacies of that, but the requirement to live on the land is not included there. So that's the, that's the kind of the issue when you have three different state statutes that list qualifications for these three different types of licenses, whether it's the landowner preference, landowner owned land, or the free antlerless, and they're all slightly different it gets challenging sometimes, and that's why Scott, that's why he, he looked around for a little help with this. And it's, it's, it's not a good situation. I mean, we've, we've struggled with it. We want to try to consolidate it as much as we can. But in essence, if somebody um, owns land, they essentially get the landowner preferences. Resident landowner, very, very important to point out. You have to be a resident landowner to receive any of these uh, licenses or treatments in the drawings. And the other qualifying factor I guess I would put on there is that when we're talking, you know, 160 acres, we've got a, a quarter there, right? And let's say that uh, I own the land and Tony farms the land. I rent it out, cash lease to him. Um, one of us can claim that quarter as a qualifying piece of land, but not both of us. So there's one, one of us is going to take that opportunity, uh, but we, we both can't benefit from that so if we got you confused yet we're only a couple of slides in <laughs> there's there's time to back out <laughs> yeah, uh, just to add some confusion to back up to the free antlerless tags available only in units where they are 
offered. Do they have to be left over in the main drawing? Additional tags. If there's doe tags available, all sold out, right. the landowner can still get a free antlerless tag. Correct. The, the trigger is that in, if in uh, Meade County there are double antlerless tags, then free antlerless licenses are available to landowners in Meade County. And those are in addition to anything that, that, that is allocated by the department. Those are in statute. Uh, the way that it's designed, you will get those licenses if you ask for them. Um, so I really don't have a problem with people that uh, are residents, you know, getting these permits, whether which one of the three it is. But so out of state people that buy land for hunting purposes. And if they're hunting pheasants, are they, because they own land in quarter land in South Dakota or whatever, or, or a whole bunch, are they able to claim, how, how is that handled? And for deer license or big game, it doesn't apply because they are definitely non Residents. Right. Non resident status has nothing to do with land ownership as we deal with uh, those, those kinds of subjects in, in, in game fish and parks. Right now, there is no recognition of a, uh, a non resident landowner as a separate class. Uh, if you are a non resident, you buy non resident licenses. So if you're going to pheasant hunt on your land, you, you purchase a non-resident license. If you're going to deer hunt, uh, you would need a non-resident license. And that goes West, by your driver's license. It's, it goes back to basically. domiciles and where you return home at night. Yeah, that's that, that, where you call home, that is where, where you are a resident of. And so in, in the case of deer, uh, there's always an opportunity to purchase an archery deer license. Those are unlimited, you can, you can purchase those. But when we get into the rifle portion of things, um, obviously, as we talked about, uh, you know, the 8% allocation West River, but there is not that allocation East River, so they are regulated to leftover licenses after the, or in the third drawing. So. Any other questions before we move to the next? Okay. Uh, got through this one. So now we're going to move on from the landowner portion of things and move into uh, what most of us uh, or system that we're working with is the preference system. And talk about how preference points impact the drawing. I'm going to, I'm going to walk you through a couple of examples and show you where, uh, you know, where those points benefit you and, and maybe some of the challenges that are presented with the whole preference system. Um, our system is a weighted lottery. Um, it's, it's a lottery, uh, random drawing, but the preference points give you advantage over people with less preference points. Um, it, it, it ensures that those with the most accrued points have an advantage over those with, the f with fewer preference points. It's, as it says there, uh, the, it ensures individuals with preference points will be drawn before those without preference points but it does not guarantee that, that the person with six years is going to draw before the person with three years. Uh, it doesn't do that, but the person with six years has an advantage over the person with three years. Um, that's just the way, it, it's a weighted lottery. Um, preference points may be purchased. Uh, that was a, a change that we made uh, three years ago-ish, three or four. Um, when an individual is unsuccessful in drawing their first choice in a season. And that doesn't mean you have to apply in order to purchase a preference point. You can, if you don't apply for that season at all, for any given year, you can still purchase a preference point. Um, $5 for resident, $10 for, for non-resident. Uh, one to two preference points required to be successful in high demand units. We're gonna 
go through a couple of those high demand situations and I'll show you where you just are not going to draw a license unless you've got at least one year and sometimes two years of preference. Um, Commissioner Jensen and I have been kind of going, uh, uh, c communicating with a, an individual and, and he has concerns over this and I want to make sure that you, you guys all understand what the ramifications are of the, the changes that we made here uh, in 2015 drawings um, when, we, when we moved the preference system around a little bit. How, how big a revenue source is that? Five, uh, the people that just buy, uh, buy the points. Uh, I mean, is that is that a, is a substantial it, amount? I, I'm trying to think of what our revenue is. 180 thousand, some like a right number. That sounds a little low, actually. Okay. You know, it used to be where you could purchase the preference point separate from applying for the license, and then in 2012 or 13, I think is when it changed to where all preference points you had to purchase those and I uh, the number that sticks in my hand in my head is around two hundred fifty thousand dollars for all that together now what we generate because we get five dollars from residents ten dollars from non-residents um, and that's the number please don't hold me to that but I'm pretty sure that's close to where it's at so it is it is a lot of and uh, I have not heard a lot of feedback from the the uh, the dollar value uh, as far as you know whether it's five dollars for residents ten dollars for non-residents um, I we've definitely got some feedback from individuals that are not happy about having to purchase the preference point because it was free previously um, I can tell you as a person that applies in, in at least one other state that our fees are substantially lower than than others uh, I know uh, the one I'm familiar with is Antelope in Wyoming, and I believe that's $35 a year for me to purchase a preference point. So, uh, any other questions on preference points? Otherwise, I'm going to move into some examples. Um, we'll get through these and hopefully uh, try not to bog you down here. I want to talk first about the general drawing sequence and how we move through uh, a drawing. Um, I apologize for the small print, but there's a lot of information as we move through our different steps. As I said, you know, we, we talked about that landowner preference and 50% of licenses being allocated to, to landowners. So the first step in our process is to allocate 50% of all licenses available to landowners. And we start with the top group. So the top group is the landowner with at least two years of preference. I would tell you that this doesn't happen very often, but it is, it's the first category. And if we've got 200 licenses, we're gonna say 100 licenses are available to that very first group, landowner with at least two years of preference. And we'll allocate, the system draws those licenses out randomly, goes through everybody whose first choice is, is with landowner preference in that unit and issues those licenses. If there's any remaining licenses after the two plus group, um, then they fall down to the next level. The next level would be any landowner that had at least one year of preference. He wasn't successful last year. He's applying in the drawing this year. He's got one year preference. And uh, whatever licenses have fallen down out of that first hundred would be available to that group. System spins through, issues the licenses, whatever's left over falls down to number three. And that's the landowner just landowner with no preference. That's, that's where 98% of our landowners are going to come into the picture is uh, they're, they're going to come in with zero years of preference and we're going to go ahead and, and the system runs its, runs its uh, thing and, and allocates those licenses and with probably 10 or so ex exceptions, East River and West River, we're going to satisfy we're going to be able to fill every landowner license request that we have, uh, excuse me, landowner preference request that we have. There are, like I said, a 10 to a, or so units where we have more landowners that are applying with landowner preferences than the 50% allocation uh, that it, it exceeds that supply. Once we've spun through that system and we've got, let's say there's, a, I'm in one of those 10 units where I, I've got 105 landowners but only 100 licenses, 
Um, I'm going to have five unsuccessful landowners at that time, and they're going to follow the lightly colored line. They're going to drop all the way down to number six, which is the general preference. They're going to go into the general drawing with no preference. Going back up, number four, now we're going to start the, the drawing process for all of the general public, anybody that applied without landowner preference. We're going to go grab the other half of those licenses, the 50%, and we're going to take that group of licenses and, and ish, start issuing licenses to the two plus preference group. And again, I go back to 2015 was the first year that we implemented that. That was a change that we brought forward to the commission and, and said, hey, here's, a, here's a way that we think we can get some more licenses into the hands of those individuals who have three, four, five, and six years of preference. Um, we're going to create this new group, and that's the two plus. We always used to be at one year of preference and above. Now we're at two years of preference and above, and that's where we start. So we do the same steps four, five, and six are exactly the same as they are above in the landowner process. You, you, you have your licenses, you, you match it up with however many applications you have. If you have uh, uh, more licenses than you have applications, then those licenses fall down to the next group and they fall down to the next group. And we just keep going until we're done. And we go through every first choice that we've got. Say if we've got 700 first choices in Minnehaha County, we're gonna spin through every one of those and, and, and we're gonna issue the first you know, if we've got 500 licenses, we're going to issue 500, and then we're going to have 200 that uh, aren't successful. And they're actually going to drop down to number seven. That's where we get into our second choice option. You can put in two choices. Um, and and once, we've, once we've gone down to number seven, if we've got licenses that are left over, we, we go through all of those second choices. We do a random drawing, and we issue the licenses that are left over until we run out. And again, when I say we, this is, this is uh, Sean Eide pushing a button. This isn't us drawing tickets out of a hat or anything like that. Um, when we get down to the second choice, um, you, that doesn't affect your, if you draw one of those licenses as a second choice, it doesn't affect your preference. Whereas any of those, if you, if you drew a license in steps one through six, at the end of the year, we're going to sweep your preference and you're going to start over at zero next year. But if you draw a license in, as a second choice, then you retain your preference and you have the ability to purchase another preference point for the following year. Scott, can I ask a question? Yes, sir. In addition to the other person that you made reference to, that I had ongoing discussions with a rancher in the middle part of the hills, and Mike can help me because I talked with Mike, and I'm not sure I'm going to articulate what his issue was, but... So on the application, there was first choice, and then there was second choice, landowner, and he didn't get his first choice, so he became, the, he then went to the second choice, but his landowner preference didn't apply for his second choice, and that's where the rub came, and I don't think he got a license either under choice one or choice two, mm -hmm. which he didn't think was right, and he didn't think it's clearly stated that on the application. Mike, my... Okay, and so he was, in, he thought the department was interpreting the application wrong. He interpreted it a different way, and I am, I mean, I'm thinking that he thought his landowner preference should apply for second choice, or should trigger, be triggered for this second choice, but it wasn't, so he didn't get either one. And I didn't know what to tell him other than, Call Mike, <laughs> <laughs> or call Scott. Yeah. I mean, we got, we had a lot of conversations about this. Let, Scott, well, could he have solved that by going with the landowner owned land and at least gotten a license for his particular? Not in the Black Hills. Not in the Black Hills. Okay. Right. Yep. Uh, you're you're right, Gary. It sounds like he got the right information, and that is that the way that we have done this is that landowner preference only applies to your first choice in the first drawing. Um, same way when we move into uh, leftover tags in a second drawing, uh, landowner preference doesn't apply there either. Um, right or wrong, I, I think there's debate for that, but, but that is the system as it's laid out right now, is that landowner preference in the general drawing only applies to the, to the first choice. 
So I don't know, I mean, he even, he was insisting that I go get an application and read it and then tell him how I interpreted it. And so, I mean, I tried to, to go along with all that and I don't know if it's something we need to it's, define I, it's, differently in the application or, I, or not. But I, I would tell you that that certainly we'll make a note of that and, and, and if we're not explaining it well in the application, the paper application or online, we would certainly, you know, look for some better language and give some clarity to that. Thanks. Uh, hey, there's one, one flip side to this that I, I, you may have mentioned, Scott, and I didn't hear it because I may have stepped away. Um, if you go through steps, if the total applicants for steps one, two, and three number less than the number of half of those licenses available for landowners, those trickle down, of course, to the next level too. So if you only had 40, 20, and 10 um, in categories one, two, and three, for example, the leftover licenses of 100 or whatever the number would be would trickle down. Um, I think you did, but I just reiterated. If, if I didn't, I'm going to get there. But yeah, you're right. Uh, it's it's uh, as the applications continue to fall down through the system, any licenses that we have available continue to fall down through that system as well, uh, just right down the line, one through seven. So, but it's a good point. Thank you, Tony. Sorry, I didn't see your first. Well, I, I'm just I'm just telling you thanks because okay. yeah yeah go ahead. <laughs> So I've got uh, four examples here that, that's kind of going to wrap this up and, and hopefully give you, give you some visuals on how this thing actually works. Um, and, and hopefully uh, you'll, you'll be able to follow my logic here. Um, I'm going to start with like the, the least demand unit where it's, it's kind of easy and, and we issue a bunch of licenses and all of the folks that apply on that license are happy to down at the end where we have a really high demand unit and we, we, we likely are not going to be able to meet all that demand in the near future and, and that's probably where these discussions come in um, with uh, individuals that think we need to modify our system in some way. I'm gonna start with West Sully County. Um, as you can see here, we've got a, a landowner preference uh, pool. The, each one of these are those pools that we talked about. The landowner zero plus preference pool, and, and again, this is West Sully County, but this is for a whitetail license. This is not for an any deer license. The any deer license in Sully County is going to look completely different than what a whitetail license is, because a whitetail license, there's not as much demand as there is anytime we have a mule deer or an any deer license, which allows a mule deer to be taken. So you can see we've got 125 licenses that are available to this group. That tells me that we've got 250 of these licenses that are available in the whole unit. We're going to take 50% of them. We're going to apply them to the landowners. But since there isn't a lot of demand for this, we don't even we don't have a landowner that's got any preference. Nobody, nobody, no landowners applied with preference. We only had eight applications for land, uh, from landowners that wanted a whitetail license in West Sully County. So. We spin through that process. Each, obviously, we've got more supply than we've got demand. So we, at the end of that process, we've got 117 licenses remaining out of the 125 that are allocated to that group. So as Tony mentioned earlier, we take that 117 licenses and we add it to the, the next 50%, which is an additional 125 licenses. And we end up with 242 licenses that are available to the general uh, non-landowners non with at least two years of preference. And you can see we had 10 of those individuals. Uh, obviously, we've got more licenses than we've got applications, so we, each, each one of those 10 is going to be successful. Leaves us with remaining licenses of 232. We fall down to the next group, 232 licenses, 36 applications. You can, you can do the math here. Uh, what, what happens here is that ultimately we end up we have uh, 196 licenses available for people that don't have any years of preference. We've got 202 applications. There were six unlucky people that applied for uh, West Sully County, 18 type license, which is any whitetail, any antlerless whitetail, um, but 196 of the 202 were successful. So if you wanna go hunt a whitetail in West Sully County, you have a very good chance of doing that. Uh, if, if these application numbers say the same, you're going to go about every year, unless you're, you have my luck and, and don't get drawn. So, did have 173 people that used uh, 
uh, this choice as their second choice. But since we issued all of the licenses to the first choice, there are none available for second choice, and none of these individuals would get a license in their second choice. So that's Sully County, West Sully County. That's a pretty easy one, just kind of straightforward. We'll move on to Lake County, which is one that I used before. And, and uh, this one, we start to ramp up our demand a little bit. You can see that uh, we do have the two landowner pools here. We've got uh, one individual that had two years of preference. Likely this is someone who just became a landowner or bought a preference point and didn't apply because as you can see, we're meeting most of the demand for landowners. So um, that's kind of an outlier, but it, it does create the category because we had a, a landowner that had two years of preference, um, 175 licenses. So that's, we've got 350 total for the unit. Um, we, as we move down through all of the landowner groups, we were able to take care of all the landowners. So everybody that applied in Lake County with landowner preference was successful in drawing a license. And when we were done, we had 30 licenses left. Those 30 licenses fell down and were, were uh, added to the 175 license allocation, the other 50%. And as you can see, uh, anybody with two years of preference or more was successful. And we had 103 left over. Those 103 fall down to the one plus preference group where we had 198 applications. Um, so we had, you know, about half of those individuals with one year of preference were successful. Um, if things all stay the same, all those individuals are going to draw the next year if everything stays the same. Um, but you can see that we're starting to ramp up our demand a little bit, and now we don't have anybody with zero years of preference. We got about half of the people with one year of preference that are drawing, and everybody with two years or more is drawing. Third example, and in this one, we're going to jump out West River and, and talk about Butte County. Um, and, and Commissioner Jensen, this is the, the, one of the units that we were discussing. Um, you can see, and this is kind of the way West River deer drawings work, uh, the landowner. Uh, demand, even though this is a high demand unit, the landowner demand, we, we can still meet that in most cases. So in Butte County, we've got an any deer license, just a single tag. Um, we've got 150 total available for the unit. So 75 are going to go to landowners. We had one individual who had a preference and, and he was successful. We had 58 landowners that applied for 74 licenses. We got all those folks taken care of. And we have 16 left over from the landowner preference group. Those 16 are gonna fall down here. We've got 91 licenses that are available to the general public. And the general public with two years of preference or more. And we've got 149 individuals out there that had at least two years of preference. Well, we're gonna have roughly uh, 58 individuals that had two years of preference that were unsuccessful in, in this drawing. And there was, uh, doing the math here, about 180 or so because uh, so anybody that didn't have two years of preference or more was unsuccessful and and this is where we got into this conversation uh, Commissioner Jensen and I and an individual basically unless you had two years of preference you had no chance of drawing a license in this unit if you put it in as your first choice you weren't going to draw and that is the change that I talked about earlier and that we made in 2015 was to create this extra preference layer. Uh, we used to be here, so we would have, we would have had uh, 91 licenses available for about 270 individuals and anybody with one year of preference or more would have been able to draw. And now we've kind of ramped that up and increased the, the qualifications and you need at least two years to draw in this unit. And his argument as a dad was that his daughter wouldn't be able to get a tag or a license for one year or two years. And so he was saying if we're out to try to encourage young people to hunt, mm -hmm. we're, this isn't doing that. I mean, yeah. that's one, that was his main point. That's... But then he was talking about buck versus any deer, and then it got a little more confusing. But, right. but that was his main point, right? It, that, Yes, and, and, and actually, uh, 
Uh, his suggestion was is that we should open this wide up and it should be a lottery, that we wouldn't have these preference groups. He actually wanted us to go back e even further the other way than where we were previously, and we would take these 91 licenses and anybody would have a chance to draw, whether that be with zero years of preference, one or two. And, and we actually just went the other way two years ago and said, we're going to give more advantage to those individuals that have at least two years of preference. Um, that came out of the deer survey that we did in 2014. And, and, and one of the things that we had to go on in that survey was that people said, give a little more weight to the preference points. And, and this was one of the ways that we could have done that and this is the way that we chose to do it. Um, but it does, it, it creates the situation where you basically have to have two years of preference at least in Butte County right now with the number of deer licenses that we've got available for an any deer tag, um, it's, it's gonna take you two years to draw, two years of preference in order to be eligible to draw. But he could go back and buy a license on his own. If, 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 he, was an own, if he was a landowner, he would have that opportunity. Um, the other suggestion, I guess, uh, that, that uh, I threw out to this individual, is he was not so concerned about his opportunity as he was his daughter's. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, his daughter already had a youth tag so it wasn't that she wasn't going to go deer hunting she was going to get that opportunity the the issue became access to an any deer license so the opportunity to shoot a mule deer buck is what we were talking about and and through our conversations i hope i made that clear that that was mm -hmm. what we were, that was what the issue was not can i go deer hunting but can i go hunting for a mule deer buck and then there was a related issue that we talked about because he wanted to know what can I do to try to change the system? Right. And it's really not an administrative rule, but we, I told him then that if he wanted to pursue it, he could submit a petition, and then we would go through our standard petition process, although it really doesn't fit that, right. and, I, and we told him that. So I don't know what he's gonna do, if anything, but, because it's, it's more an administrative thing right. than it is a commission thing. And, and I think I'm, when we sum things up, we can kind of get to what oh, okay. we're talking about uh, just a little bit, but. Um, right, and I've got a comment that, yeah. that about that same time, I get a question the opposite way. How could someone with zero get one when someone with two right. di didn't? And then we clarified that for him. So yep. we have both sides right. that yeah. want it. Exactly, so. that, and, yes. Um, got one more example, and then I'll, then I'll wrap up and, and hopefully finish up with a couple of comments here. Um, Harding County uh, Limited Access Unit. This is uh, the Slim Buttes unit up in Harding County. Uh, uh, four or five years ago, whatever that was, we, we created this. It's, it's all the Slim Buttes. It's all public land. Um, there is no landowner uh, uh, preference in that unit just because there's no private land in that unit. It's all public land. And this has been a very popular unit for us. Um, we've only got 125 licenses. As you can see, we've got 364 applicants this year with at least two years of preference and only 125 licenses. So all of the licenses went to those individuals. Um, you can see as we start moving down through the, the numbers here, there, there's a lot of demand for this unit. Um, it's, I think, uh, one of the highest satisfaction units that we've got in, in all of our deer hunting units. Um, it's popular, um, but it is very hard to draw a license. Um, if you look the, the graphic at the bottom, the, the 865 number, that's the number of years of preference that in, in each category. The next column is the number of people that were successful and then on the right is the number of applicants that we had for each one of those categories. So we had one individual who applied with eight years of preference and that individual was successful. We had six individuals that applied with five or, and five were successful, 21 with five years of preference and nine successful. I won't read all those to you, but um, you can see that, that's a, that there's a lot of demand and there's a lot of preference that's stacking up in, in that individual unit. But what doesn't happen, and that goes back to what your, your point was, Commissioner, or Commissioner Peterson, is that we don't have anybody with zero years of preference or one year of preference drawing. We do have 41 out of the 172 individuals with two years of preference that drew. 
Now, if we were to go back to our old system, where we would have started with one year of preference and move that up, I can guarantee you that out of those 204 individuals, there would have been quite a few of them that would have drawn a license while we had several more up here that would have been unsuccessful at the same time. So, Final slide, um, what do we know? Um, landowners have several options to obtain deer licenses, including the guaranteed licenses on their own, own land and unit-wide licenses in the general drawing. The current draw process is intended to reduce the number of applicants with two years of preference and places greater weight on those applications. We, we made that change, as I've said a couple of times, we made it to the two, when we did the drawings in 2015, um, that was based on what the information that we got out of the 2014 survey. In high demand units, an applicant may need two years of preference. We showed that example. There's going to be times in some units where you are not going to draw a license unless you have two years of, of preference. And the final thing that I, I, my final bullet there is, you know, something that Tony and I have talked about several times in, in, in talking about the different examples up here. Whenever you give, oops, whenever you give an advantage to a group, it comes at the expense of another group. There is, you know, you can't, if you've got 250 licenses and you're going to give somebody some advantage to draw those licenses, somebody else has got to pay for it somewhere along the, along the way. And when we have different individuals that come forward and say, well, I think you should do it this way, yeah, we, we can do it that way, but someone has to pay the price for that because we've got a, in any given year, we've got a finite number of licenses that are available in a unit. And, and, and we can't make that any, you know, if we've got 500 applicants and 250 licenses, if we give some, somebody a bigger share, it comes at the expense of somebody else. There's no way to equal this thing out. So I think that's my point is there are, there are different ways that we can apply this preference. We, we could go back to the one year preference group. We could do as we've been suggested, go back to zero. We can uh, use some sort of multiplier on preference. Um, the, you know, different states do it different ways. There is no magic bullet here. If we adopt some new form of applying preference and give someone an advantage, it comes at the expense of someone else. And, and I think that is the, my main point of all this, is that we have a system. I'm not going to tell you that it's without flaws. I mean, every system has them. But what I will tell you is that we apply it fairly to each individual, and, but their, in each individual's view of fair is a little bit different. And if I draw a license, I really think it works great, and if I don't, that whole system is not worth a darn. So, Can a youth, I mean, remind me about the youth licenses. I mean, can you get one if you're a youth no matter what, so that really isn't the issue? Right. It's just that you won't get a buck necessarily. Correct. Yep. It's it, youth licenses are antlerless deer licenses. Okay. Um, and a, a youth, say a ten-year-old youth, cannot purchase a point. Is that correct? Before correct. they're old enough to hunt, they can't start and get three correct. by the time they're old enough to. Hunt. Once, once they are eligible to uh, hunt in a season, that's when they can begin to apply for preference. Thank you. Russ? Is there somewhere on our website that would walk somebody through this? It, and, and, and I'm not saying just slide by slide, but is there an audio or a visu video or anything like that? Because this is probably the most common question I get next to non-resident waterfowl. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't get through a meeting. There, there, I, we have some application tutorials but no I, I we don't have this on there uh, there's a YouTube video of a presentation that uh, that I gave the Commission on elk drawings a couple years ago kind of explains the elk process um, I, I think that's a good idea Commissioner Olson I, I also think that or I know that one of the promises that I provided to an individual is that we are going to do a better job in our, whether it be online or, or, or with our paper application, of making sure that people understand that if you put in for Butte County, based on last year's demand, 
that you are likely going to need two years of preference. I mean, that we, we want to be able to put that out there and say, hey, we want you to know what you're getting into so that there isn't any expectation that you're going to draw a license with zero years of preference because it's likely not going to happen. Can't guarantee that because I don't know how many applications we're going to receive, but I think we need to be a little more straightforward with that and, and, and not creating expectations for individuals. And, and, and I can promise you that we will do a better job with, with that portion of things. Um, I, I, I think I can probably work with Chris and Emily and, and some other individuals to maybe get some other in information out there too that um, maybe doesn't walk through with this kind of a detail, but at, but at some level so that individuals understand what they're getting into. Um, I think a lot of individuals uh, don't, they, they're putting in second choices that they're never going to draw. You know, if you put in Butte County as a second choice, you're never going to draw it. You just never are. That's just the way it is. Um, uh, another problem area I see is Black Hills deer. We have individuals that apply for any deer licenses in the Black Hills, and they've got six, seven, eight, up to ten years of preference, where if they want to go deer hunting in the Black Hills, a whitetail license is about an every other year deal, uh, just about guaranteed every other year. Sometimes you can draw them two out of three. So. It, it, it's, I think it's an information thing that we need to get better at, and I would agree with that. And as I said, I, as I talk to that individual, we will do a better job with it. Okay. In, any other questions? I did have a follow-up to that question that Commissioner Spies asked. Uh, Chris Peterson was able to dig out those numbers on revenue generated from preference points. Um, last year it was two hundred and ten thousand dollars for res no excuse me two hundred and twenty for residents ninety thousand for non residents so a total of three hundred ten thousand dollars generated last year We're, yeah 50. you know what's what's surprising to me and some people are it, it's it's new and some may not like it uh, but we still have people that are applying for I'm not sure Butte County, some of these counties where you have to have preference points before you're going to draw, and they refuse to pay $5 for that point. I mean, eventually they get, I mean, you got to have some points, and we try to convey that to them that those points are really important, but it's, it's not the money, it's the principle, and it's growing. I mean, people are, are growing more accustomed to having to spend that $5 on a preference point. Um, but as you can see, if you don't have them, you're not going deer hunting. just have more uh, layers in there. Yeah, if you got another hour, we'll go no, we through that. We can quit go through <laughs> that. <laughs> yeah. I'll send you the YouTube link. No, it, it is different, and we'd be glad to bring that. We'll plan on bringing that to you um, next spring when we talk about elk again, okay. go through the elk drawing process, because we are currently in the process of reviewing the eligibility for landowner preference for elk drawings. And so it's likely that we'll be in front of you here very soon talking about that eligibility requirement there and, and possibly some changes to that. Sure. Oh, good. The work group, the deer management work group is looking at and revising or? Mm. Didn't we send out a survey a couple years ago and asked all that, and there was quite a bit of agreement that? Yeah, that, that's, that's that 2014 survey that okay. we talked about. Um, the yeah, the they're, they're, process was okay? I think if I'm, I might get my numbers wrong, and Cindy will throw things at me, but it was, it was somewhere around 70% of the individuals wanted to uh, do something that allowed them uh, more opportunity to draw their preferred deer licenses every year, but they weren't give, willing to give up any opportunity to do it. Mm -hmm. they, didn't, they didn't. They still wanted it to work the same way. They just wanted more licenses every year. Yeah. And as I said before, that's they agreed that's with the process. Possible. Just could I get, you know, they agreed with the process. Yep. Okay. Very good presentation. And by tomorrow, I won't remember how, how to explain <laughs> it. But today, just, I I've just got it. Just give us a call. We'll, okay. we'll remind yeah, you. Yeah, and you guys always do help when someone. And usually, a clarification can be made, and they can re, then they realize why something turned out as it did too. So, 
Thanks so much, and we'll adjourn until tomorrow morning at Thank 8 o'clock. Thank you.